Hello everyone and welcome back to another Disney vlog. Today we're going to be doing a QA and a from all of the questions you guys asked me over on Instagram. We're going to be covering all the things that you want to know about my trip to Walt Disney World in 2022. So there were some really great questions. We're going to get started. But if you're new, hi, my name's Brogan and I make lots of home, travel, lifestyle and of course Disney videos. And in the lead up to our trip to Walt Disney World in May 2022, I'm going to be covering all the details, what it's actually like to go back now, my experience with my partner Benji and everything you need to know basically. There's going to be pack with me's, there's going to be reviews, there's going to be vlogs it's gonna be amazing so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything and I already have done a couple of planning videos so you can check out the playlist up here and I've already done a full video on budgeting for the trip so do check out that one after this video if you haven't seen it already and thank you again to all of you that asked questions because this video wouldn't be possible if you didn't ask me things and, and knowing what you want to know so I have tried to split it up into sort of um, different categories, a bunch of things together for you to make it a little bit easier to follow, but there will be timestamps if you wanna skip along or come back to this video. So I'm gonna have a sip of my cup of tea and we're gonna get started. I love sitting and chatting all things Disney, it makes me so happy. There are a few questions that are just sort of frequently asked just in case anyone is new here. So the first one is how long will you be going for? And the answer is two weeks. Coming from the UK, we find that two weeks is a really good amount of time. It means that we can do all four of the Disney parks at least twice, plus the water parks and Universal with enough time to do some shopping and relaxing, eating all the good food. Two weeks is absolutely perfect for us and I'm really looking forward to it. We go literally end of April, so the first two weeks of May. So I will just say now, if you're planning a trip out there and you do see us, please do say hi. We're very friendly, um, unless we obviously are dashing to some sort of reservation, but I will always stop and chat to you. So please do say hi. The next question is, are you staying in a Disney hotel? And with the recent changes, do you think it's worth staying in a Disney hotel? This is a really good question and I think a lot of people have been torn since a lot of the changes have come into place. It's really hard to know what works for you and your family with your budget. But for Benji and I, we really love staying on Disney property and I did look into the options. I did look at Airbnbs, different hotels, what that would be like but we are staying at Pop Century. It's our first time there. We previously stayed at All Star Sports. We were actually originally booked at All Star Sports, but they moved us to Pop because it's currently still closed as I'm filming this. I think it's due to reopen again this year, but I'm really excited about Pop Century. It's another value and it's right on the Skyliner route. Apparently it's a really great resort. So I think it ticks all the boxes for us. I have actually stayed at a moderate resort at Caribbean Beach and I didn't like it because it was just so big. There were so many internal buses and it just wasn't for me um, however that was before they did um, some major renovations so maybe it'll feel a bit different but I do think it's worth staying on Disney property granted some of the perks have gone away but there are still some really great things the big perk for me at the moment is the extra magic time they can't call it extra magic hour anymore because it's not an hour it's actually 30 minutes but it is every day at all of the parks uh, 30 minutes before the parks open for Disney hotel guests. So that 30 minutes is absolutely valuable to me to be able to ride those big thrill rides very early on in the day. Um, may mean that we don't need to use the Lightning Lane, which I will go on to talk about Disney Genie and Lightning Lane later in this video. But I just think that's a massive perk. Being in the Disney bubble, having all the amenities on our doorstep. I really love the quick service uh, restaurant for our breakfast. Um, being able to pop back to the hotel and have a rest time if we need to. The swimming pools. Obviously, you've got the transportation to be able to access the Skyline and the Disney buses. That's always so helpful. Parking, they say, is complimentary, but it's actually $15 per night in a value i think it's 20 dollars if you're in a moderate and up um but that 15 dollars per night does cover you not only at your hotel but all the disney parks as well so that's a bit of a perk because we are going to have our own car i mean there's loads of pros and cons whatever you choose whatever accommodation works for you but we are staying at pop century all right some pre-trip questions so how do you budget for a disney holiday for me, I break it down into two parts. You've got the stuff you have to pay for beforehand, before you go, and the stuff you'll need to be paying for whilst you're out there. So you can go and watch my Disney budget video, which I think will massively help you, but you need to sort of weigh out how much everything's gonna cost in terms of the flight, the hotel, the tickets, and then how much you will be paying towards 
food and uh, merchandise and Disney Genie and anything extra um, you also sort of need to roughly work it out yourself so that's the best way I find to budget um, I just get a little spreadsheet going and I just list out what the items are and how much it is and then um, I have a little tick list if we've already booked and paid for it but you can go and watch the video it'll give you more information we're going in May too have you been in May before and any tips on the weather or how busy it gets no this is my first time in May I've actually only been to Walt Disney World twice in my adult life I did go as a kid I honestly don't remember it so my first trip was in 2017 when I was 20 two 23 and then i went back a year later with benji in 2018 and i haven't been back since i have done california a couple of times and i've done disneyland paris a lot so i have quite a good understanding of the disney parks but actually i haven't spent a lot of time in florida uh, only two trips this will be my third so um the previous two trips we went out in september october and i really like that time of year However, I honestly don't think that there will be a quiet lull period over the next couple of years. I think with everyone's trips being postponed and moved and cancelled, we're going to see the parks being very busy this year. I am expecting that. And I just lowered my expectations on how much I might be able to get done in comparison to previous years when it's been really quiet. But you know, I'm obviously going to maximise on those 30 minutes we get in the morning and using Genie Plus possibly. No tips on um, weather either because I've not done it, but I'm assuming it'll be very similar to September, October time. Probably pretty hot still, but hopefully manageable. Um, I don't do well when it's too hot, but obviously take lots of regular breaks, drink lots of water, enjoy that sweet, sweet aircon in the shops. When it is really busy, you can do things like go for your meal. Maybe you have lunch at like 11 o'clock or three o'clock on those quieter times um, for food. And then um, maybe you just decide, hey, we'll queue in this ride and then we'll go and look in some shops and then we'll do another ride. And you just have to sort of like see how the day goes and maybe you park hop, maybe you go to a park in the morning you go back to your resort you chill and then you go back in the evening so um, you just have to see how it goes do you have any pre-holiday exercise routine to combat all the walking slash theme park legs this is a really good question because i think if you're a first timer you completely underestimate how much walking it is um obviously you don't have to walk loads but the adrenaline kicks in and i know for us personally we end up dashing around everywhere we get really excited and we can do around twenty thousand steps a day um on our holiday for the full two weeks obviously when we're doing quieter days and water parks not as much but it's still pretty intense and it's really important that you um you know do get some workouts in beforehand even if it is just walking a little bit more so i will be increasing my steps i feel like you almost have to train for a disney holiday and if you don't then you will end up with blisters you will be really tired so you do have to prepare for it especially when you're in the heat um i i feel like now i've done two trips i'm ready and um i won't be changing anything too heavily but i am going to be preparing myself for those intense days of lots of steps don't wear new shoes either guys no new shoes shoes that you can walk miles in you are going to need and want them have you made your park pass reservations yes i have thought i would mention it here just in case you're like what is that but disney do require you to pre-book which park you want to go into each day and I know that this is a little bit annoying, but I, it does make sense why it's in place. And so I basically have done a, a spreadsheet with all the days and I've roughly worked out which parks we want to go into. And then your park passes are easy, really easy to book. They're free um, and it seems like there's loads of availability for us. I've been chopping and changing days and I've cancelled and rebooked some. But yes, we have park passes in for every day of the holiday. Do you think Tron will be open for May? <laughs> Oh, guys, I would absolutely just love if Tron was open for our trip. I am dying to get on that ride. However, I am not getting my hopes up because they have said summer 2022. And I think it would be pretty optimistic to think it would be open in May. I don't know. Summer to me is June, July, August. But we will see. Maybe some magic miracle may have it open. If it opens, great. Guardians of the Galaxy would be also amazing to ride. However, if I can't do either, I, it's okay. It just means we have to go back, doesn't it? But Benj and I actually have quite a few new rides um, that we haven't done before. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in Hollywood Studios is new for us and Rise of the Resistance in Galaxy's Edge. We have done the Galaxy's Edge 
Star Wars land in California and we've done the Millennium Falcon ride but we haven't done Rise so I'm really excited about that. Um, what other new rides have we not done? Remy's Ratatouille Adventure in the France Pavilion although we have done that in Paris. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few new things so if we don't get to do Tron or Guardians then that's okay but we will see. I've got my fingers crossed if it's meant to be or be guys. Is it tough not being able to plan so much as you used to dining and rides etc? This is a good question, this did come up a lot and it was a massive concern for me because one of my favourite parts of a Disney holiday genuinely is the ability to plan things. I love the planning side, I'm a massive spreadsheet organisation queen, like I would honestly be a professional Disney holiday travel agent if I could, if I wasn't doing this, um, because it brings me so much joy. But actually it's not it's not tough, it's not hard, because I do feel like I am still planning quite a lot. It's very strange because it's obviously a little bit different. You don't book the dining 180 days in advance, but you can still book it in advance, it's just a shorter time, which actually suits me because I'm feeling like I want more time to decide on my restaurant. So actually I kind of like that it's 60 days now, so that suits me fine. Um, rides, I'm not that fussed. I think because I have done everything, I'm content with knowing that nothing is guaranteed. I'm just gonna play it by ear and see how the day goes and we'll rock up to the parks and just decide what we wanna do there and then. So um, it's just a different way of doing the trip, I think. But I'm still planning because I still needed to plan what days, what parks, what restaurants, um, what sort of activities we want to do outside of Disney and the only real thing I'm not booking in now is the ride. So actually I'm still doing quite a lot of planning which is making me really happy. <laughs> the next few questions are around Disney Genie. So before we go into the questions, let's just have a little recap on the lingo and what everything means. My Disney Experience app is the app that you can access your tickets, your hotel, everything you need in the app. Within the app is something called Disney Genie. Disney Genie is a free planning tool that basically helps you organize your day and will recommend things for you to do, places to go, wait times on rides. It will just give you a rough suggestion of what's nearby and help if you are completely clueless and you're not a massive planner like me. Disney Genie, the planning tool, will be very helpful for you, okay? It's not gonna be confused here. We've got the app, we've got the planning tool. I honestly, at this point, do wish that the, the language and the wording around these things was clearer, but we'll get there. Um, Disney Genie Plus is replacement of the fast pass service. You can pay $15 per person per day to access over 40 attractions and shows across the parks and you can book in different rides, different things you want to do as part of Disney Genie Plus and it's a great way to obviously skip the queues. Um, However, it doesn't include everything because then you also have lightning lanes and lightning lanes are what a lot of the Disney vloggers that I watch in the reviews, they call them fancy rides. These are the rides that have a premium price that you pay on the day per ride and it will fluctuate depending on what the day is looking like, the crowds are like. So for example, you pay additional to ride, I think there's two rides in each of the parks. So Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's in Hollywood Studios, they are on the Lightning Lane. They're not included in Disney Genie Plus and you have to pay extra for them um, and you can only do two of those per day and with Disney Genie Plus, I believe when you're booking things in, you can't have more than one at a time. Or once you book your first one, you have two hours. It's 120 minutes, I think, until you can book the next one. Or once you scan in to your first Disney Genie Plus ride, you can then make another one. Does that make sense, guys? So you could basically scan in at nine o'clock and then get another one at 10 and 11 if there was availability because it's all done on what's available. So if you look at it like, remember when they had paper fast passes and you'd walk up to the physical booth thing, scan your ticket and then you'd get return time. Think of it like that, but digital. So you can like refresh the app and it will change all the time where people are canceling and, and the, the queue's going quicker than they thought, that kind of thing. 
but that is what we're working with so I hope that helps explain things for you any of you that are confused please correct me if I got any of that wrong because I'm still like figuring this out myself as well but let's go into the questions around it and then we'll see will you be paying for Genie Plus Yes, we will. I 100% want to give it a try. I think it'll be hugely beneficial in Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. I think we'll really get great value there. Maybe even Animal Kingdom. Actually, maybe maybe no. We'll probably do Lightning Lane on um, Flight of Passage. But I don't know if we'll use it in Epcot. Can't see us maximising... Unless we use it at Epcot in the morning and then another park in the afternoon, because I think you can do that. If you pay for it in like Hollywood Studios, you do a couple of rides there and you move to another park, I think you can continue to use it in another park. I think that's how it works anyway. My God, it is so confusing. I may end up doing like a whole video where we just like show you it in detail and give you our experience, um, but we'll definitely talk about it in the vlogs and yes, we'll definitely be trying it I don't think every single day um, and really it just comes down to what our priorities are that day what the ride times are like and we'll just see that leads me nicely onto the next question which was have you added genie plus to your tickets before you go I've seen that it's cheaper I genuinely did not realize this was a thing until you guys asked the questions but I believe that UK guests it's 699 in advance and a lot of packages are adding it on um, well, a lot of ticket providers are adding it on as a package, but um, you can pay for it in advance. I don't see the point unless maybe, okay, so I know we're going to Animal Kingdom on our first day because it's my favourite park and that's the tradition for us um, that we have started because that's what we did on our last trip and that makes sense to me. So maybe I could pre-book it on that day because I know we're definitely going to be there and I want to try it out. Um, but really, no, honestly, genuinely, I don't see what the like the point of it is because why would you want to pre-book it? What if you walk up to the park that day and everything's really low wait times? You could save yourself, or for me and Bench, $30. Although it is cheaper, it's still like £14, £15. So if we rock up on the day and realise we didn't need it, uh, it would be a bit of a waste of money and we could have put that towards a new mug or a snack or something. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of, I want my tea. So no, I probably won't be pre-booking is the answer to the question. I may change my mind. Convince me if I need to pre-book anything, let me know. A few questions on our plans. So could you do a walkthrough of your rough plans each day for your trip? Yes, I will. The only problem I have with this guys is that if I told you exactly what day and what park I'm going to on those days, it does expose me a little bit in terms of telling you exactly where I'm gonna be. And I don't love that. I would love to do a video closer to the time, talking you through roughly which parks we're doing in which order, um, and which dining reservations we booked in, um, my bucket list, and then just close to the time, we'll do a final summary and wrap up with plans detail plans before I go but if you have any better suggestions unless I mock up a rough fake plan um, I don't know how else to do it but I will of course give you all the details don't worry top three things that you're looking forward to when you arrive in Disney oh my gosh um oh there's so many walking into the first park on the first day and that feeling of knowing you're there and you're about to spend two weeks there is nothing like it honestly there's nothing like it two being in the disney bubble being completely disconnected from the world feeling like you're absorbing all the magic and everything that disney has to offer and the last one is just the ambience really like the smells the sights the sounds the songs the characters on the parade everything to do with the atmosphere i'm just really looking forward to absorbing it all again and i honestly genuinely I'm just so grateful that we finally can go back out. I've missed it so much. And really, maybe this time away for so long has just given me the opportunity to miss it even more and just appreciate it all so much more. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to so much. Oh, there's so many things like food we ate, rides we did. I Benji and I honestly are like big kids. We have the best time on all the holidays we do, but there's something about Disney where together he loves it as much as I do and we just run around and just sometimes we're so spontaneous and we'll take silly pictures and we'll try silly foods and um we'll maybe stop by a photo pass photographer and get some nice photos and then we'll look in the shops and we'll buy something that we both like and oh I just love it all 
Can you tell I love it? I just love it all. Are you doing anything special this trip, like the football game from 2018? So if you haven't seen those vlogs, you, you have to go and watch them. I'm sure a lot of you have seen them by now. They're, they, they're the most popular videos on my channel. But we did go and see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play my first NFL game, which was epic. Benji is a big fan of the Bucks, so it was really cool. It was such a good atmosphere. We did get an Uber all the way out to Tampa and back, which cost us an absolute fortune, but it was well worth the money for us, and it gave us, like, a little bit of variety amongst so much time in the parks. You know I love Disney, but it is nice to have a break from it all sometimes. So, yes, I would really like to do something similar. We've been looking at what other games or sporting events are on during that time because it's obviously a different season so i think maybe like basketball or um ice hockey or something would like that would be really cool but we aren't sure what is going to be out there just yet we haven't looked into it in, in detail so if any of you have any suggestions let me know um but other than that we've just got some really special date night dinners that we want to do um spending a lot of money on the food i've actually increased our food budget quite a lot <laughs> because I said to Benj, oh, I really want to try that restaurant and it'd be lovely if we could do that, but it's probably going to be about $100, which is quite a lot of money. And we have to really like work out what was our priorities. So we're doing things like that. Um, we're also doing Cirque du Soleil, which I've already booked and paid for. And Cirque du Soleil is the new Drawn to Life show at Disney Springs. And I'm looking forward to doing that. So yeah, it should be really nice. Did you book a Universal Hotel? This is a good question. Yes, I did. If you watch the Disney budget video, you'll know that I was weighing out the cost of Universal's Express Pass and whether it was worth staying at a Universal Hotel for one night. And I was really torn because I didn't know whether to do it at the beginning of the trip or the end or in the middle. And then do we cancel our Disney hotel and then rebook somewhere else? But I actually decided to just keep our Disney booking, which I know means that we're then technically paying double to be having two hotels. I'm fully aware that that is uh, an expense that we have had to sort of think about, but it made the most sense to just basically keep Pop Century and we're going to pack an overnight bag and financially the costings were better for us to basically book the Hard Rock uh, Hotel and we actually up upgraded our room to, let me double check what it's called, I keep forgetting it. Okay, so I've just pulled up the booking and I don't mean, mind being transparent with you and you can see my thought process here, but I booked us the Universal Hard Rock Hotel for one night, it was £450 and I actually upgraded us to the club level room and that includes free Universal Express Unlimited which is worth $110 per person per day. So for $100 per person, so it's $200, you can actually get the Express Passes, you can get them on the day that you check in and the day you check out. So I think you technically get two days worth of express passes. Does that make sense? So it ended up being better value to book a night at the hotel and with the club level room, you get access to continental breakfast, they have like snacks um, and you get all the club level amenities. So there's like a big list of things that you get. Look into it. It just made so much more sense. So we didn't mind paying that extra because we feel like we're getting re a lot of benefit for it. So that is why we've decided to book um, in the middle of the trip to do Universal. So we will obviously definitely be sharing all that with you. We'll do a whole video on um, Universal and um, we'll go to Volcano Bay as well. But yes, I did book it for one night. I'll be honest, it did feel like a big expense for one night at the hotel, but for me, I think it'll be worth it. And I'm excited to share that experience with you as well. Any merch that you have your eye on? No, actually I don't. Apart from some mugs and pins that I'll see when I'm around, there isn't anything I particularly wanted. Uh, it was just the spirit jersey that I managed to buy when they um, put it on shopdisney.com. So I've I've already got that, which I wore in my last video. Other than that, there, there are a lot of the merch I'm not um, feeling at the moment. I'm, I'm just not in love with a lot of it. I don't need a lot of stuff, but I think I'm more excited to just sort of browse when I get there. In the past, I have had a big list and I've watched a lot of Disney hauls before I've gone out and been like, I need that, I want that. And to be honest, close to the time, oh, there's Bonnie, close to the time, I probably will um, sort of dig a bit deeper and see what's available because then I know what I'm looking for. 
but mostly no I don't have anything that I have to and need to get. The next question is will you be hiring a car? The answer to that is yes but only because it basically felt free and here's how. If you book a Virgin flight via Virgin Holidays and you book a fly drive they include the car hire in your flight package so we basically have got the car hire and we did that in 2019 but I now appreciate that the cost of hiring a car has gone up massively um but we did that because it ended up actually being cheaper to book via Virgin Holidays than it was directly with Virgin Atlantic at the time I think it was about 1200 I talked about it in the budget video so we will have a car this time we are a little bit nervous about it um especially doing gas and the tolls and insurance and parking it's a whole new level of something we have to think about but I think it'll be really valuable and it means that we can drive between the parks more easily especially going to the water parks and being able to chuck our wet stuff in and then maybe drive to springs and in the past we've had to rely on buses and ubers and although that is fine and you'll have an absolutely perfectly fine trip like that um, I was intrigued to see how different it would be having a car and yeah Benji's a really confident driver he'll be great um, neither of us have driven in the US before I'm fully aware that it feels a bit redundant having a car when the Disney transport's so good between the Disney parks but it's more the case for us being able to go off property try some restaurants that are you know Know, further afield maybe um we use the car to get to and from universal and stuff like that so it just made the most sense and to get to and from the airport is the big one because disney have taken away the magical express bus that was free now Miz connect charge you to get to and from the airport as well as the Miz connect service there's also a new shuttle service from mco called the sunshine flyer that's starting this year so maybe look into that as well it's um just another form of transportation apparently actually the sunshine flyer is going to be really nice and the staff are going to be dressed in 1920s rail conductors and engineers and they're designed on the exterior to look like an old fashion a fashion fashioned um bus or passenger car i just think that'd be really nice how lovely so just in case you're interested that is also another option what are you most looking forward to exploring off-site i would highly recommend cracker barrel I really appreciate the recommendation and I want to throw it back to you guys. What do you recommend we do off site? Because I've got nothing in our bucket list apart from I would love, love, love to find a really epic mini golf course. Benji and I love mini golf. Love it, love it, love it. And I do have memories when I was a kid and I have seen photos when we were in Florida. We used to go to these big mini golf courses that had like massive animals and I just have this vision of going to something like really cool obviously you've got the Disney ones and Universal have their own one but if anyone's been to something like really wowy um, I want to hear from you so let me know what restaurants do you love we haven't really tried many off property um and we'll have a car so let me know will you still do character meets even though we can't hug characters still yes we will i love meeting the characters it's all part of the experience i'm not a massive character person and i don't actively go too far out of my way to meet characters or queue up in massive lines i do always like to meet mickey minnie donald daisy's always nice uh, chip and dale are really fun to meet but i really wanted to do an autograph book this year and i don't think they're doing autographs right now either so maybe things will change by the time we go but yeah, it's a bit sad we can't hug them, but we can still talk to them. You can still have that interaction and I'll still film it for the vlogs for you guys and um, we'll just see how it goes. Yes, it's slightly different, but I do totally understand why it's necessary. Are you going to the water parks? Yes, we are. We'll be going to both the Disney water parks and Volcano Bay. Benji and I absolutely love water parks. We have done water parks in like Cyan Park in Tenerife is one of our favourites ever. Volcano Bay was up there is probably number two for us. It's followed closely by Typhoon Lagoon. So the fact that we can tick off um, those favourite water parks is going to be uh, so much fun. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little secret, guys. Benji and I actually have another holiday before this one. And we're going to be doing water parks in this place that we're going to on this new holiday and I haven't shared it yet because I'm like mm, is it gonna happen but keep an eye on my Instagram make sure you follow me over there because I'll share with you, with you soon but we just love water parks so much so yes all right some food questions because we all know we all take food very seriously here um but how will you plan for dining since the dining plan option isn't available currently 
Obviously, Benji and I gutted that the, the dining plan is not uh, currently running. We instead got dining credit. We have about $500 that will be given in dining credit, which, to be honest, with how we want to go and do some luxury, lovely date night dinners, that probably won't go very far. But it's definitely something, not complaining, better, that better than nothing. So in terms of planning dining, I'm going to decide on the restaurants first. So pick out exactly which restaurants we want to do. I will then roughly work out how much a meal is going to cost. And I know it sounds crazy, but I'll look at like the menus. And so, for example, I want to go to Ohana for dinner. A meal there is probably going to be 80 to to $100, I imagine, especially if we have like drinks and cocktails and whatever. So if I know roughly a budget per the fancier meals that we want to have. I really want to eat at California Grill. Again, that's going to be very expensive. Um, so once I know how much those meals will roughly cost, then I will put a budget towards how much we're going to do for the other meals. Because maybe if we're having a massive dinner, we then don't have a big lunch, or maybe we snack through the day. Really hard to budget for food right now, but once I establish exactly which restaurants we'll go to. Um, I'm just gonna just see how we are when we get out there. Where in the parks are you hoping to dine? That's a good question. I actually wrote it down for you. So California Grill, Ohana are my number one and two. Um, Hollywood Brown Derby is currently on my potential. Gary and Adam recommended it really highly. That's in Hollywood Studios and Benji quite likes a few things on the menu. So that's quite high. Space 220 is somewhere I would like to look into, but I'm not sure in the menu right now. And then I really want to do a steak date night dinner. And we did La Celia last time and it was incredible. Highly recommend. Um, so I've put Yachtsman Steakhouse or Steakhouse 71, which is the new one in the contemporary that took over from what was previously the wave. And I've heard that breakfast is good here as well. So maybe we try that for breakfast, but I don't know which one to go to yet. So let me know if you have tried either. Um, I've also got down Kona Cafe breakfast because I want to try Tonga toast. And I've also got other places that could be nice, Grand Floridian Cafe for brunch. And I want to have a cocktail in the Enchanted Rose bar so they're my restaurants must do's tepan edo also in epcot could be a good fun one because benji hasn't done that before um but i don't think i have anything else on my dining list at the moment and then the next question was top five food items that you want to try oh my gosh snacks guys i actually have way more than five so let me run you through some of the snacks i want to try Firstly, Flower and Garden Festival, I've always wanted to try a Violet Lemonade and Frushi. So they are high on my list. I cannot wait for both. There are lots of 50th anniversary snacks, like in Hollywood Studios, they've got a Glimmer and Shimmer Blondie that looks amazing. And they have an ice cream sandwich at Dino Bites in Animal Kingdom. If you go and watch Disney Food Blog, they have a video, I'll link it, that's like 20 or 25 snacks to eat in 2021, or 2021, 2022. So go and watch that video because there were loads in there that I like the look of. Um, I absolutely cannot wait for the brioche sandwich that they sell in the France Pavilion in Epcot. It's literally just ice cream and a brioche like bun that they like toast and it's delicious. So I want that. <laughs> Cheeseburger spring rolls in Magic Kingdom, bubble waffles in Disney Springs, uh, Dole Whip. I tried Dole Whip, I don't see the hype. Ugh, I feel like the, the hardcore diehard fans are gonna come for me for that one, but don't see the hype. However, do really like the idea of the Tropical Serenade, which is a drink that's a mix of um, the Pog Juice, that's very famous, and um, Dole Whip, I, I believe. So I wanna try that. Um, the Fresh Fruit Waffle at Sleepy Hollow. I've had that before, Sleepy Hollow. Um, it's really nice. I also love Le Fou's Brew and the Cinnamon Bun. I wanna get those um, at Gaston's Tavern in Magic Kingdom. The Night Blossom drink, Animal Kingdom, is one I want to try again. Uh, what else have we got on this list? It's massive, guys. It's embarrassing. Oh, and high on the list is Gideon's. I really want to try Gideon's and Disney um, Springs for the cookies and also apparently the peanut butter cold brew coffee. It's meant to be delicious. So I have a huge list of snacks. I think I have more snacks than I have restaurants at the moment, don't I? So 
that's just a few i just can't wait um and the last question is lots of changes in disney now what are you excited for and what are you anxious about i think it's really obvious that everyone's anxious about covid of course we'll be taking as many precautions as possible we'll be wearing our masks we'll be anti-backing we'll be doing everything we can we've seen our friends go to disney over the last few months victoria disney in detail gary and adam if you watch adam hatton and gary um they've been and reassured me that things feel safe and that there are things in place to help make the experience um, equally as magical but obviously those things are going to be in the back of my mind you know they're going to be naturally um I'm a little bit anxious about even leading up to the holiday like I'm probably going to have like a mini isolation period where I don't see anybody for like two weeks leading up and even when we're out there and having plans in place for what happens if we get COVID, what does that look like for us? Um, what does our travel insurance cover in terms of the policies? Like all those really boring like logistical things, but it is just a part of traveling in a pandemic. I think you have to be realistic. I went out to Spain, like Mallorca, the end of November and all of these thoughts were through my mind then. So it's literally no different for Florida for me. Um, doing the PCR testing, um, all of that sort of stuff. But what am I most excited for, let's end on a high, is as you know, just being there and having quality time with Benj, two weeks together in one of our happy places. Uh, I just can't even describe to you how happy it makes me. I feel emotional just even thinking about it. Like I just, I just love Disney so much. I don't want to get upset because I'm just excited. I just like happy tears, you know, I'm just so excited. Ooh, um, I think I need some tea. <laughs> I think I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this mega long Q&A. Uh, it's been so lovely chatting all things Disney to you. Please do chat back to me in the comments below. Let me know your countdowns. It's less than 100 days for us. Today is actually our double digit day as I'm filming and that just makes me so excited. So let me know yours. Let me know your top recommendations. If you've been recently, what do we need to add into our bucket list? Close to the time, like I said, I will do our more in detail plans and um, our itinerary and bucket list and everything. Maybe I'll actually record the day I book our dining in as well, just to show you that process and how easy or hard it was to get certain reservations so there'll be more videos to come so do click subscribe thank you for watching this have a lovely rest of the day bye